my my advice to my friends in the patriotic front party is that there should be no desperation okay. there should be no desperation there is no need for any one of us to show desperation because we have a leadership and we have a, we have created the process for ourselves a process through the constitution of the patriotic front party uh, to be able to um, to undertake that uh, uh, convention and elect a new leader it, it, before we do that uh -huh. we are safe we are still okay let's mobilize the party let's encourage our party members let's uh, let's give credible checks and balances uh -huh. to the UPND all right so now um uh, so, so talking of, uh, of, of 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 mobilizing the party, yeah. do you feel um, in its current state the PF is attractive as uh, perhaps it were, let's say in 2020, as it were in 2011, in 2016, 2017, is the PF um, still attractive uh, for new membership? Is the party still um, that vibrant party that... Um, it can still remain formidable even in the aftermath of uh, the, the 2021 general election? Well, I think uh, the Patriotic Front Party is more attractive now than it was in 2020. Why do you say so? I say so because now you don't see the things uh, which annoyed uh, many of the Zambian people in the PF. Now you don't see uh, anyone accusing PF of political violence. You don't see that. Now you don't see anyone accusing PF of any of those things uh, which were causing you know, confusion. Uh, some people were saying PF was arrogant. We have now seen arrogant leaders. We have seen leaders who can act outside of the law with impunity, circumventing the law. We have seen elections uh, which can be done in a constituency with an outdated ballot paper. Okay? We have seen that. So uh, even the arrogance of PF, the arrogance that uh, uh, people were, were putting to us is, is now so minute in the face of what is happening now. So clearly, if you ask me, and I'm being very honest with, uh, with you as, I, uh -huh. uh, uh, as that is extending to our listeners, uh -huh. PF is more attractive now than it was in 2020. So do you feel the party will um, outlive the post-2021 um, elections? And the uh, reason I ask this is that uh, uh, people are quite skeptical in the sense that uh, there have been two examples Two yes. former ruling parties. Yes. Unique. Yes. Where, where is it today? Thirty years uh, down the line, MMD with uh, only ten years since the party lost power, a share of uh, uh, its former self. In fact, uh, uh, the party on the, the party actually started crumbling uh, with at least two years after losing power, if not a year after losing power. How different is? the PF from these two? How different is the patriotic front scenario from uh, these two? Because uh, there, there is always a saying that history tends to repeat itself. You have asked a very important person, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. And just yesterday, I had an opportunity to meet uh, one of the opposition presidents of one of the political parties. Mm -hmm. And when I visited her at their secretariat, I was privileged to meet a very experienced good man there who told me something that impacted me I, uh, and I was so happy uh, to meet that person. This person said, I may not quote exactly what he said, okay. but he told me that Kaunda was not a dictator, but the people around KK made him a dictator. These are the people who began to craft songs such as Wamu Yayaya. The reason was for them to, you know, to maintain status quo, for them to continue benefiting from his position. Okay, if Kaunda wins elections again, they are happy; they will keep on benefiting from him. What followed in 1991 is that KK lost elections. Those are the same people who began to say KK was actually a dictator. They forgot that KK brought about the investor of Zambia. 
they forgot that KK uh, was instrumental uh, in the creation of UTH, in the creation of the Tuta Road, in the creation of all roads from Lusaka to provincial capitals. They forgot that KK developed the country. So instead of promoting the legacy of UNIP, they began to verify KK. You understand? Mm -hmm. Now when you do that, you are heading to destruction. Was that similar to MMD? Of course, yes. Very similar to MMD. You must uh, remember when the last president of the MMD, uh, His Excellency, the late uh, Rupia Bozanban, how he was looked down upon by his own members, who now started to move camp into the, 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 the newly elected party into office, the Patriotic Front Party. So for us in the PF, for us in the PF, you, we already know the agenda for UPND is to destroy the legacy of PF. So for us who are in the PF, let's ensure that this legacy is maintained by ourselves. And this is why I'm saying today, there is no need for desperation because President Ed Galungu is there and he must be respected. If UPND cannot respect him, we should respect him. We, sh we should draw from him. You understand? Mm. That's part of the reason I'm saying that. And I was educated just yesterday by a very good man, mm. very experienced man. So, um, by the way, his education was consistent with my belief uh, because uh, if you are going to pick three people who respect President Ed Karunga, I'm one of them. And, uh, and there's nothing that can change me because uh, President Ed Karunga has directed my work in the past. So can one be right to um, simply put that your campaign is yes. premised on the Ed Karunga legacy? It is premised or is on, on the Ed Karunga legacy. premised which is on which? the PF uh, political ideology which is consistent with how Michael Sata led PF and how President Ed Galungu led PF okay Michael Sata made mistakes Ed Galungu made mistakes just like HH is making mistakes now you understand mm -hmm. my focus is on the PF ideology that is my focus and this is where my campaign will be based. Okay. This is why today, uh, when I'm speaking about PF, I'll be talking about the consistency of our ideology with what we have done in the past. The legacy of the Patriotic Front Party must be promoted by ourselves. That is respect for the party, that is respect for our leaders. And that is also ensuring that we sustain this party because it has done so much for the Zambian people. All that right. is not to say. So it is without mistakes. Do you subscribe to um, the cause for the need uh, to have the party rebranded? And what's of course. generally your, your, your take on of uh, course. this score of thought? Of course, I subscribe to that. And it's very important to rebrand. We have to remake who we are. And we need to do so constitutionally. So how does the party rebranding when uh, you keep on referring to the former president, to the... You see, rebranding doesn't mean taking away what you have. Okay. Okay. There, there is, there is no way you can view rebranding by taking away what you have, uh, the good things you have. You have to consolidate on the good attributes, consolidate on the good attributes, and eliminate bad attributes. Okay. Re eliminate bad attributes, introduce new ideas, introduce a new system, introduce uh, new uh, legislative provisions, even within your own in, uh, uh, party constitution. Mm -hmm. Introduce those provisions which are going to make you appear more credible, which are going to make you uh, um, not only appear, uh, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, act in a credible manner and be able to push an agenda that is beneficial not only to a small group of people, but for the entire country. So, if we are talking about the problems of disunity, mm -hmm. what can we do differently in order to consolidate unity? Okay? Those are the things we should be talking about. When people were complaining about Kadarism, what can we do differently to ensure that that story is dead forever? You understand? Mm -hmm. These are the things. Uh, who is possessing the qualities to be able to enhance our chances of ensuring that we carry forward the country uh, into a direction that is sustainable for all Zambians? Mm -hmm. those, are, those are the issues. Okay.